Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan with a hot take on my own video about a screenwriter's rant on Santa Inc. Uh, it's blowing up. My my video's blowing up uh, for me. You know, I don't have that many followers, but I got 1,254 views on this one. That's a lot for me and 100 comments. And uh, I just wanted to address and clarify some points uh, that some of you seem to be taking a little bit out of context maybe. Just to be clear. So smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books. The links are still in the description. Also check out a Piney Power t-shirt. Support your local Pineys and check it out. Now, oop, wrong one. There we go. Uh, so let me address uh, some of the comments. Now some of you, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Some of it's just obviously... I think kidding, edgy humor, being being a little bit uh, edgy, I get it. But uh, uh, some of you, with your comments, you're coming off as a little bit anti-Semitic. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. It's a little, it sounds that way. I'm not accusing you. Relax. I'm not trying to police your language. I didn't delete the tweets. Any anybody's comments who got deleted, that was YouTube. I don't delete that stuff unless you attack me or you're just an a-hole and I don't like you um, but generally I'm not a censorship guy so I'm not going to censor you but uh, uh, we've got all these strange comments about Jewish people which I think misses the point of one of my comments now one of my comments was to call out uh, Seth Rogen and Sarah Silverman on their what I felt is a hypocrisy and in here let me let me explain the hypocrisy Okay, uh, I don't give a flying F it, who you are as long as you are, if you're cast in a movie or whatever, if you're good in the performance, I don't care. I don't care who plays Santa. I don't care who does the voice. I don't care if it's Seth Rogen or Morgan Freeman or whomever. You, you, you know, it could be anybody. Anybody can do the voice of Santa. However, when woke Hollywood does it, and I mean, this is a woke movie, right? It's, a, it's fighting against the patriarchy. The themes are all in there of intersectional feminism and, you know, race and gender. That's all in there. So when you're doing that stuff, uh, understand that woke Hollywood told us that if you uh, are voicing a person of color and you're not a person of color, that's bad, right? That's why the voice of Cleveland uh, was originally a white guy, and they replaced him, with, replaced him with a black guy. This is why Apu is no longer on The Simpsons, right? And there are other examples. Uh, what was the TV show? Was it Big Mouth? I think Big Mouth. They did the same thing there. Actresses actually quit their job because they weren't the right color, weren't the right race. So when you support that stuff in your material, as they are, I think, in this movie, in Santa Inc., and then you have the audacity not to follow your own rules, then yes, I think that's hypocrisy. I think it's hypocrisy if you're going to call people out for particular races or sexual orientations or whatever, and then you're going to bash Christmas, you know... Imagine if it was the reverse, right? Imagine if a bunch of Gentiles got together and made a Hanukkah special and filled it with a bunch of tropes about Jewish people. Uh, people would lose their damn minds, and rightly so. And rightly so. Um, and uh, it would be different, too, understand, if this was a positive message about Christmas. If this was a positive message about Christmas, even if it was woke, I'd be okay with it. I don't feel this is a positive message about Christmas. Uh, it, 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 it got very mean very quickly, at least in the, in the trailer. So I don't think it's a positive message. And I don't think intersectional feminism is a positive message in general. So just by putting it in, unless you're going to put it in only to have Santa become very based and save us all from intersectional feminism, you can't make it work. So this is the real issue. The real issue here is not, don't make it about Jewish people, please. Just don't do it, okay? It, it's, it's gross. And, and you hurt the cause of those of us who are trying to get people 
out of this intersectional feminist nonsense, this Marxist critical race theory nonsense. This is all part of the same broad umbrella of wokeness. If you want wokeness to stop, you can't fall into uh, these traps where they're just, they're going to call you an anti-Semite for some of the things you said. And that's not going to help the cause of getting Hollywood to stop greenlighting, in my view, crap like this. Um, they'll keep greenlighting it to spite the bigots. You give them all the fuel they need in the world to say, see, we have to make this because there are bigots in the world and we have to fight the bigotry and blah, blah, blah. Even though this, I think this, there's no audience for this movie. <laughs> I don't think there's any audience for this movie. I think it's a very tiny slice of angry, bitter, mostly single people who don't have kids who have signed on, signed on for the wokeness. And uh, again, it's all part of this weird push in not only media, but other companies to increase their ESG score, environmental social governance, right? And they're doing that now uh, in, a, in, a, in a project like this because ultimately, if they had done this correctly, quote unquote, if they had just done a comedy in the claymation style about Christmas and it was just the usual you know crazy nonsense I'm going to just change the image here because I'm getting bored of it yeah there's another another scene NPCU that should say um, even though they did that they they uh, 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 now, I, now I lost my train of thought even though uh, they they did it the right way even if they did it the right way there's still not a huge audience right if they did this as a stoner movie a stoner movie with santa smoking bongs and cursing and all that still would be a very tiny not as tiny but a, a small audience it would be the adult swim crowd i mean don't get me wrong i love that stuff i used to watch adult swim all the damn time with the cartoons there with Aqua Teen Hunger Force and the Mike Tyson Mysteries and all that stuff. Yeah, if you're going to do it in that vein, it could be very, very funny. Or uh, even Robot Chicken, which is this is very close to, only it's more slick. Um, but, uh, man, you, you carve off just a section of the Adult Swim crowd, the stoner crowd. You're talking very, a tiny, tiny... I mean, look, I bought advertising on that right when I was promoting the pineys or I always promote the pineys but when I was promoting it on TV I actually bought time on Adult Swim on my local cable uh, to millions of people in the area and that those commercials were surprisingly cheap because Adult Swim Again, is a smaller audience. It's on late at night from like midnight to three on Sunday. So the only people up at that time aren't going to be people with jobs. They're going to be stoner college students and high school students who are up super late. They don't care. They don't have jobs. Maybe they're going to school. Maybe they don't care that they're going to school. They're getting high and they're staying up late anyway. And they're going to be fried all week, but they do not care. They're young they recover quickly or they just they're just going to sleep it off in class somewhere that's a small small audience and uh if and seth and sarah used to rule that audience absolutely used to rule it and now they're taking that same audience and they're saying be woke or get lost bigot and that's not right in my view it's uh, just to get their ESG score up so they can transition to what? I don't know. I mean, Sarah already sort of made a transition with Wreck-It Ralph, kind of transitioning into, you know, doing voices and cartoons uh, in a big movie. Seth was already in big movies. He's tried to make a transition. He tried to make a transition with uh, uh, Green Hornet didn't quite work out he's not an action guy um they didn't they didn't 
I don't think uh, I don't think that movie could have worked either way. But especially with Seth Rogen, he's too much of a clown. Um, you know, he has to. He would have had to have done something a lot more serious, I think, first to give him a little street cred before he did something like the Green Hornet, which was sort of meant to be sort of kind of a superhero-y movie, but kind of not because it's not the sort of character I think. And it's a shame because Seth probably could make that transition. And if we weren't stuck in such woke times, um, he probably would have. If it if this was ten years ago, uh, he'd probably make that transition easily. But you might say, why why are people doing this? Why are they making such awful, awful, awful TV shows and movies just to make them woke? You have to look at it this way. Um, BlackRock is worth trillions and trillions of dollars, and they're 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 bigger than even Disney. And Disney's like the biggest media company in the United States, right? Well, they're pushing the whole ESG thing. Disney is is doing it. So everybody in the studios are doing it. You know, you, if Seth makes, I don't know how much money he makes, let's say, let's make, you know, one year he'll make like, I don't know, $10 million doing movies and TV shows and every all the little things he does. And keep in mind, this is a, a voiceover thing for him. So he knocked this out in two or three days, tops. So, you know, I don't know what he got paid, but I mean, he's he's got a big name. He probably gets a piece of it, but you're talking like, I don't know, I'd say at minimum, he's probably got like quarter of a mil just, just for two or three days worth of work. That's a pretty good rate. That's a pretty good rate for a guy like him. Uh, for, for anybody, really. And he probably did this like, months and months ago, probably almost a year ago, and they, they recorded all the voiceover they needed, and they animated it. Maybe they brought him back for a couple of, you know, redubs, but that's all they would need. And, uh, you know, so he's making really good money. So if you're working for these studios, and you're making $10 million a year, and they come to you and say, hey, listen, we want to give you more work, but you got to get your ESG score up. you got to be more woke. Your woke score up, essentially. So you got to be more woke. And then he, he of course, has turned up his wokeness big time uh, on social media. Uh, he's, I don't know why he keeps going on Twitter, but maybe this is why. He's, he's pushing up his social media score. His wokeness score is through the roof. Do people hate him? Yeah, I would say people hate him now. But does he care? If they say to him, well, Seth, you've gotten your score up pretty good, and we're going to give you $15 million worth of work this year. That's pretty good, right? I mean, would you do that? I mean, what do you say? You know, as Bob Bobcat Goathwaite once famously said, what are you going to do when they drive a truckload of money to your house? Say no. And all he has to do is betray his fan base. Well, maybe he doesn't see it as a betrayal. People can pretty much rationalize anything. Maybe he sees it as, well, if my fans won't follow me on this wokeness stuff, then maybe they really weren't my fans at all. Maybe. Oh, man, a commercial in my own in my own video. A damn commercial. Well, I'm not going to play that. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I'll reload it. See, oh, no. Come on. I don't want a commercial in this. How many commercials you put on my damn videos, YouTube? Oh, sorry about that. Anyhow, so overall, I'll say this. Oh, look, look, uh, when I did the video, they had 114 uh, upvotes. <laughs> I don't know how many dislike votes. I got to get the app. I've got 100 upvotes. That's pretty good. So my analysis is almost where the, the, the and I only have a, uh, you know, 2,300 followers. So that's pretty good. Anyhow, uh, my point is this. This would have been terrible under almost all circumstances because it's woke. Because it's Hollywood hypocrites dictating morality. And essentially, 
and this is just a guess on my part, but essentially, I mean, Seth may believe all that crap, but I don't think he does. I think he's doing it for his ESG score. I think he's doing it for a paycheck. And at the end of the day, you could be woke and keep following him. And if you're not, and there's enough people on Twitter that are going to say, oh, I love it, Seth. I think, oh, I think everybody who doesn't like you is a bigot or whatever. Same thing with Sarah, right? You know, this is Sarah Silverman, the woman who mistook construction markings on the ground for the signs of the bad guys from World War II, right? This is the woman who runs a podcast who said, oh, maybe we should split up in the USA one and two, which is never going to happen, by the way. Wouldn't work anyway, because um, the left would be quickly infiltrated by China <laughs> and destroyed, and we'd be fighting, you know, we'd be in a, 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 a civil war anyway. So never going to happen. Never going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to get the pushback. You're going to get the woke push, the anti-woke pushback. And all this stuff is going to go out of vote. All of it. And uh, the people who pushed it the hardest, I think people like Seth Rogen. Sarah's kind of like pushing it, but I wouldn't say she's as bad as Seth. She's, she's actually... In some of her more, not many times, but in some of her more lucid moments, said a few base things. She tries to be smarter and more reasonable. I don't think Seth, from what I've seen, has said anything smart or reasonable regarding the woke nonsense. So, I think Seth will be one of the guys who just gets thrown uh, thrown off the, the, the gravy train because he'll be too woke to be uh, to recover his fan base. Whereas Sarah might recover a portion of it. she Because she could uh, pivot and say, well, you know, yeah, I got caught up in it. And I admit that. But, you know, I said this, this, and this. So I wasn't totally in on it. Whereas Seth, I don't, I don't know. It, he doesn't seem to care. Um, so, and he's, you know, like Alec Baldwin, I don't see a lot of sympathy for him on uh, Twitter. You know? I, I see him as stubbornly clinging to the bubble in order to make himself feel good, and that, in the end, is going to hurt him. So um, the pushback is here, and it's evident by your comments that uh, don't mention Jewish people. <laughs> um, that, uh, yeah, we, we, we definitely got to push back against the wokeness against intersectional feminism and all that nonsense because it's an agenda driven thing that has nothing to do with comedy nothing to do with christmas it's certainly anti-christmas which who is anti-christmas christmas is supposed to be you know the nicest time of year everybody's nice to each other and they give each other's presents like yeah i get sick of christmas too i kind of don't like christmas because i'm always broke and i can never buy good gifts for people but you know that doesn't make me anti-Christmas. I don't want to stop Christmas. Uh, I, I just would like, you know, possibly the gift thing to be uh, modified in some way. But that that's my own personal belief. I mean, look, the holidays, in some respects, have gotten too big. Sure, I've got lots of complaints. Look, i got lots of complaints about the holidays. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I don't want Santa thrown under the bus. The kids love Santa, and and they still love Santa. And I'll tell you one more quick story before I wrap this up. So I was uh, substituting uh, a few years ago when I was still a substitute teacher, and uh, I had a third grade class, and I slipped up in the middle of it. This was near Christmas, and I said something like, um, oh, yeah, if you believe that, I, you believe Santa is real. And the whole class erupted, what? Like... And I immediately realized what I had done, and I backpedaled. And I'm like, no, no, I was kidding. No, Santa's real. They were serious. These were third graders in, like, 2018 or whenever it was, uh, freaking out that I had even suggested that Santa wasn't real. So Santa's important to, to all kids. So, you, you know, you make something like this, it's not it's not good you know the character is it's one of those pure characters 
you know, even the guys on South Park, uh, who have made fun of everything, Santa's in their stuff, but Santa's not a bad guy in South Park. You can watch it. Even Santa is, you know, some horrible things happen to Santa in South Park, but for the most part, Santa is Santa. You know, just like Superman is Superman. Unless you screw him up. Uh, they did this in DC Comics with uh, Santa. They did a they did a Lobo issue where Santa was a bad guy and Lobo had to fight him and his elves. They did it on Family Guy where... But even in Family Guy, they kind of redeemed Santa. Uh, so... They've done it on Futurama, right? Where Santa was an evil robot. But in the end, they try to fix him, and they sort of do, sort of, but not really. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a joke, but it's not, it's not the actual Santa. Okay? So this, you know, was just a huge misfire. Should have never been greenlit. Um, and uh, the fact that there's all this money and all these celebrities doing it tells you there's a lot of money behind it. But it also tells you, I think, how out of touch HBO Max and the executives there are with their audience. They're just out of touch. They don't know who their audience is. I mean, this is such a small slice of humanity. Um, you know, you could have literally taken the money you invested in this and done a positive movie that everybody would have loved. And it would have been a Christmas classic. I mean, you look at 8-Bit Christmas with Neil Patrick Harris, they're trying to create another Christmas classic. I don't know if they're succeeding with that, but at least, you know, at least it looks fun. At least they're trying to make it fun for everybody, as opposed to this, which is just kind of alienating and mean and agenda-driven and vulgar. It's got everything. What's the positive? What's the upside to this? You know, I have complaints about Christmas, but even I don't like it. I watch Adult Swim stuff, but even I don't like it. So, um, anyhow, that's it for me. Tony D and Little Joan, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, make sure you check us out on BitChute and Rumble, where my most base takes live.